A city does not die when its last resident moves away. Death happens when municipalities lose the industries and vital populations that made them important cities, which not only keeps people from relocating to these areas but is actually an incentive for them to move away. This in turn leads to the image of these cities as desolate urbanscapes. In today's video we will be show you 10 American cities that are dead forever. But before starting the video I want We put our best efforts to create a single video, so please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's start. Number 10. Buffalo, New York State World-class architecture, a vibrant art scene, thriving neighborhoods, and a resurgent waterfront it's all in Buffalo, a classic American city undergoing a 21st century renaissance. In 1900 Buffalo was the eighth largest city in America. It was located on one of the busiest sections of the Erie Canal, the terminus of the canal on the Great Lakes. Thanks to its location, Buffalo had huge grain milling operations and one of the largest steel mills in the country. Buffalo prospered during World War II as did many northern industrial cities. After the World War II, the manufacturing plants returned to the production of cars and industrial goods. The population rose to more than 500,000 in the mid-1950s. It is half that today. Buffalo was wounded irreparably by the deindustrialization of America. Number 9. Flint, Michigan Flint is an industrial city an hour northwest of Detroit in Michigan. It was the home of many General Motors factories, including the Buick World Headquarters. Flint has fallen on hard times over the past 30 years due to the decline of the American automotive industry. The equivalent of municipal bankruptcy in 2002. The city had almost 200,000 residents in 1960 and has fewer than 100,000 today. The downfall of Flint can be described in a sentence. In 1960 General Motors employed 80,000 people in Flint and it employs fewer than 8,000 today. Flint was the headquarters of General Motors Buick Division for years, but these operations were moved to Detroit in 1998. Number 8. Hartford, Connecticut Hartford is the capital city of the Connecticut and Hartford is one of America's oldest and most historic cities. The city was once the insurance capital of the world. In 1950, the city's population peaked at more than 177,000 and has dropped to 124,000 recently. Hartford was beyond being an insurance center, also home to a number of manufacturing and publishing businesses. Hartford lost some of its insurance firms as they moved to new locations, primarily because of consolidation in this sector. Point five large financial firms have downsized their workforces. These include MetLife, Cigna, Lincoln Financial, Mass Mutual, and perhaps most depressing of all, the Hartford. Number 7. Cleveland, Ohio. This major American city is facing a crisis as one of its most important assets faces destruction, facing a lot of risks. Cleveland became a major port and land transportation hub due to its central location on Lake Erie. A number of the largest rubber companies in the world and other manufacturers for the car and steel industry were also located near or in the city. Cleveland had 914,000 residents in 1950. The figure is below 480,000 today. A number of the large manufacturing operations have left the region or downsized based on the transfer of the steel, rubber, and car industries elsewhere, particularly to Japan. 6. New Orleans, Louisiana The location of New Orleans at the mouth of the Mississippi made it one of the most important ports in America for more than 200 years. Oddly enough, New Orleans remains a massive port, but a number of the jobs which were once performed by laborers are now automated. A great deal of the commercial traffic which once moved by river is now transported more efficiently by truck, rail, and air. The city had also been a financial capital of the South because of the cotton and river trade. Faster-growing southern cities like Atlanta became more important financial centers as their populations grew. The city also suffered from its location, part of it below sea level, and several hurricanes that hit the city, particularly Hurricane Betsy in 1965. In August 2005, Hurricane Katrina dealt the city a nearly fatal blow. In the year after that, the population dropped to just above 250,000, down from 627,000 in 1960. 
The BP oil crisis has already begun to damage what might have been a nascent recovery post-Katrina. Number 5. Detroit, Michigan The Motor City was the fifth largest city in America with a population of almost 1.9 million in 1950. The number of residents increased sharply from the 1920s when Henry Ford created the assembly line and set a wage of $5 a day. Workers streamed in from the Deep South and other parts of the Midwest. The huge car companies became defense contractors during World War II. Detroit's demise began with the rise of Japanese imports in the 1970s. The Arab oil embargo increased the appetite of U.S. consumers for high-mileage cars. The big three built products that were acceptable to consumers until they saw higher-quality Japanese cars which began to flood the markets in great numbers in the 1980s. Detroit's car manufacturing base was nearly destroyed, symbolized by the Chapter 11 filings of General Motors and Chrysler. Number 4. Albany, New York State It was once one of the largest inland ports in the world sitting near the place where the Hudson River meets the Erie Canal. This helped it become a major center for finished lumber and iron works. Perhaps because of the influence of the politicians who worked in the city, several universities and colleges were built there. The city's manufacturing industry helped the population to rise to 134,000 in 1950. It is now under 95,000. The higher education institutions in the region have begun to help Albany become a regional center for information technology and the biotechnology industries, but these are not large enough to offset declines in the city's fortunes which began in the 1960s. Number 3. Atlantic City, New Jersey now known mostly for its gambling business, Atlantic City was dying before legislation allowed gaming companies to operate there. The city was created as a tourist location in the 1880s and a number of massive hotels were built there. The city's appeal to tourists was damaged primarily by two things. The first was the availability of inexpensive air travel to southern resorts areas like Florida. Vacationers could fly from New York to Miami, F.T. Lauderdale, and Palm Beach in less time than it took to drive to Atlantic City. The second, the rise of Las Vegas as the gaming capital of the world, made it the preferred destination for many conventions. Atlantic City got into the gambling industry in 1978 too late. Number 2. Allentown, Pennsylvania it is the third largest city in Pennsylvania with a population of 125,845 as of the 2020 census and was the 68th most populous metropolitan area in the United States as of 2020. This Pennsylvania city had two advantages in the middle of the last century. It was well located for railroads that moved freight from the Midwest through Pennsylvania and New Jersey to the eastern seaboard. Its proximity to iron or made it a major manufacturing center and refiner much like Bethlehem to its east and Pittsburgh to its west. Like many other northeastern manufacturing cities, Allentown watched its major product, in this case steel, being produced in greater and greater volumes and at lower prices in Japan. Number 1. Galveston, Texas This Texas city was one of the largest ports in the U.S. a hundred years ago. It was also the location of one of the greatest natural disasters in American history, ampled by the effects of Hurricane Ike in 2008. The event destroyed a large part of the city's tax base and set back the tourism industry once again. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.